And uh, did we get our drink on during the day? Did we? Did we? St. Patrick's Day people? A little bit. Come on, but you're disappointing me as a people right now. I'm really, this is like, I'm, 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 I'm used to my family who just fucking falls asleep during everything, so I hope you're not doing that. Is this sangria, sir? It's not very St. Patrick-like. That's okay. St. Gria. St. Gria. I like that. St. Gria. We'll give a round of applause for St. Gria. It should be Jameson, but that's okay. We'll let it go. We'll let it go. He called me ma'am. I really appreciate that. It starts off the night on a good note. It's okay. No, 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 no. If a girl calls you sir, you always call her miss. Until she's fucking 700 years old. That's the way it goes. Right, women? Are we, are we, are we agree with this? Okay, good. I, uh, let's welcome the band, guys. Uh, give us a little something, something. I don't know. I want to hear something. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Music. Can you do it like a little St. Patrick-y? Can we do this? A little challenge for the band? <laughs> Very nice. Good, good, good. Welcome the band, guys. Welcome the uh, Village Underground Band. Fantastic. Uh, my name is Veronica Mosey. I'm very excited to be here and be hosting this evening. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm happy uh, just to be out of the house, frankly, because I am 42 years old and had a little girl about a year ago. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Huge mistake. I, um, I, it's really funny. People always say to me, like, are you really tired because of the baby? I'm like, I'm tired because I'm 42. Do you understand this? Like, anybody can relate to this shit. I'm practically dead because of the baby. That's how things work. Why people are so down on teen pregnancy, I have no idea. I think it's terrific. These women, they have just as much energy as little fucks. You know, it's like, sorry, is that too much? Is that negative? Okay. It's going to get worse. I... Got pregnant at 40, did not expect it because uh, everybody told me it was like a medical phenomenon for that to happen. Apparently uh, it happens and, uh, and they think you're a dinosaur because uh, they call it a geriatric pregnancy. Yeah, it puts a real spring in your rickety old step. I felt all warm and wrinkly inside, it was nice. It's weird, I didn't even buy a, a, a stroller, I just bought a car seat that snapped into a walker. I felt that would work out. So, uh, it's weird, they kept calling it like a high-risk pregnancy. That's the one thing, you're a high-risk. Kept saying it over and over again, you're a high-risk pregnancy. I felt it was the most dangerous thing I'd done in like 15 years. I thought I was gonna give birth to a Navy SEAL. It'd be amazing, you know? And then they test you for all kinds of things. One of those things is uh, they test the baby for Down syndrome. I think this is really, I know it sounds like a downer, but hear me out. It's, it's weird because they basically say if your kid has Downs, you can just, okay, so here's the thing. I feel kids with Downs are awesome, right? I, I volunteer for Special Olympics a bunch of times. They're, all they do is run around and play and laugh and hug and stuff. So if I had a kid with Downs, I'd keep that. Uh, but if I found out my kid was gonna be like Kim Kardashian, I'd terminate that shit in a heartbeat. <laughs> Anybody else? We need like tests for really important things, right? Like if you, if you have a boy and he's gonna grow up to be that guy who calls a bartender chief, get rid of that shit. <laughs> we need personality tests, you know? Uh, so I ended up having a little girl. It was, uh, it was hard to pick out names. That's a big one. Got to pick out a name. It's really tough. I mean, who has kids here? Let me hear who has kids. By applause. By applause. By kids. Okay. Right? That's a tough one, right? Children, because you want to name them a cool name, but at the same time, you don't want it to be like super weird. A lot of people name their kids after uh, where the baby was conceived. Uh, one of my friends named her son London. The other one named her daughter Paris. So my husband and I were throwing around uh, Caesar's Palace Hotel and Casino. <laughs> I thought we'd call it jacuzzi for short, right? That would work. And, uh, and then other people name their kids really odd names, like they're really ironic about it. Like I know this couple that lives in Parks, Little Brooklyn. And um, sorry, was that too blatant? Uh, and they, they, they named their kids Gunner and Stryker. What's their dog's name? Kevin. <laughs> I can't adjust to the mom thing. I hate everybody. That's the problem. I'm like at that point in my life where I'm just like done, you know? And every time somebody says something like, you know, mommy group, you're, are you in a mommy group? I just want to yell out, I've done cocaine. I, I had a cool life before I was a mom. You know, I just feel like it just wipes mommy minutes and oh God. Sorry, a little bitter. Party of one, bitter. Um, you get me. All right. Um, <laughs> I, mean, it's, I just feel like the, the world is so, I don't even know what's happening now. Like, I'm, I'm afraid my daughter's gonna be a slut. I don't want her to be a slut. She's only 14 months, I'm already thinking this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want her to grow up and be one of those girls who talks like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything they say sounds like a question. You know those girls, right? 
They all walk around in these clusters of irritation all throughout the United States. Can't even tell who's talking when they're talking because they all sound exactly the same when they're talking. And like they all walk around their Ugg boots. I'm sorry, I hate Ugg boots. I know there's all different styles, but you know the Ugg boots, right? The ones look like a pile of dirty hamburger buns. <laughs> they're disgusting, girls. You gotta understand this. Not one guy in this room finds Ugg boots cute or sexy. That's why strippers don't wear Ugg boots. <laughs> they're always dirty. But all these girls, I just, they're so, they're, they're just like, I heard this one. <laughs> I don't understand why any guy would want to be with one of those girls who talks like this, right? A girl who has the potential to say something like, and then she walked into the party and she's wearing the same fucking dress as I was wearing and I was like, what the fuck, because we fucking talked about this. He's like, I have to have that for the rest of my life. I just, uh, yeah, I don't want her to be a dumb whore and uh, I'm just trying to understand the world and thinking about how to explain that to my daughter. Like Kim Kardashian, I hate Kim Kardashian. I really, I think she's just a, you guys are like her, you can't like her. Do you love Kim, you're very silent right now, I'm very worried. Do you, how many people uh, hate Kim Kardashian? Please give me a round of applause on this one. You don't hate her, you guys love her? Do you love her? No, you're not clapping. Neutral, you don't care, because she has a big ass, that's why, because she has, yeah. But here's the thing, you, you guys do know that Kim Kardashian made $65 million last year. Do we know this? $65 million because she has a decent ass and she's a whore. And I'm not being mean, that's on her resume and her special skills. <laughs> what really bothers me as a woman trying to make it in show business is I have a decent ass, I've been a huge whore. I've never made $65 million from it. She's not some kind of pioneer, you know, this has been done before. It's been done, they've been whores for a long time. But she gets her own show and her sister who looked like a man, she got her own show. It's just like, I don't understand, like, you don't even have to have tel uh, talent anymore to be on TV. You guys agree with this, right? You just do something weird. Have you ever seen the show My Strange Addiction? Ever watched this show? If you don't know what it is, just use deductive reasoning. My Strange Addiction. It's just weird people doing weird things. There was a guy who has sex with his car on the show. You can understand, sir, right? Um, <laughs> Sex with his car, he like lays down on the ground, makes out with the bumper, rubs the steering wheel and says things like, I just like the fact that we listen to the same music. <laughs> but that's the whole thing. I was just gonna bring that up. What kind of car? She says, you know, it was a fucking Dodge Neon. And none of his friends told him he settled. He really settled with a Dodge Neon. That's ridiculous. If you have a Maserati, I can understand you wanna be, have sex with your car, right? But yeah, and then they had another episode where this girl, uh, she eats the insides of couch cushions and naturally, because it's a delicious low-cal snack. <laughs> and, uh, and she had a therapist come on the show who was like, well, you have to understand that Tiffany does this because she was assaulted. And I was like, by a couch? Like, <laughs> why don't you just do drugs like the rest of us? What is wrong with, when does it go from heroin to ottoman? That's what I'm trying to understand. I just, I just, uh, yeah, I hate everybody. I'm trying to figure out, like, why is Rachel Ray still popular? I can't stay, Rachel Ray, she is a horrible cook. She's a weird person. She, she's not talented at all. She, Rachel Ray comes up with, with recipes that sound like a frat guy created them. She'll say something like, we're gonna make some scrambled eggs with grape jelly, Fritos and beer, yummo! <laughs> Do you ever see her do that? <laughs> it's like this weird tick she has. <laughs> What's her famous abbreviation? Come on, guys, we know this. EVOO, that's right. And, and, and she'll say, what you want to do is add a little EVOO, extra virgin olive oil, put a little EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. Here's the thing about acronyms. You don't generally state an acronym and then follow with what you just abbreviated it for. <laughs> that makes no sense. That would be like if I said, hey guys, I have to hit the ATM, automated teller machine. Why would I waste my time like that? She made a ham sandwich on this one, and then I just watch her just to piss me off, which is really fucked up. She made a ham sandwich on this one episode that she called a ham Sammy. <laughs> and she, she puts out the bread and the ham and the cheese and whatever, and then the bread, and then she goes like this. Hey, let's cut this open, guys, and see how it turned out. It's a sandwich. I mean, what do you think happened to that shit since you just made it? Like, but most of her fans are like, what's inside, Rachel? The baby Jesus? Like, Martha Stewart, she's annoying too. Why is she? She stole so much shit. You know how much she stole all this money? And then they're like, just put a, put a little ring on your Argyle sock for a year and that's okay. And then she like bakes again and we love her. 
She was in jail. She was in jail. Anyway, Martha Stewart's creepy to me, right? She, she, she sounds like she has like 15 chopped up teenagers in her basement. I mean, they'd be finely chopped in a fennel sauce with some shallots, but they're down there. That was a good joke. All right. But she, vicious, vicious, mean. Delicious joke, I like that. Mm, see me after the show. Oh, married, sorry. Um, now see, I walk well, it around. But she had this Halloween special. She comes out, she goes, today I'm Martha Stewart. We're gonna be making some scary treats for Halloween. Some spooky spiders made out of chicken wire and plastic bags. I just murdered my neighbor's puppies. I love people's voices. I do like mimicking. I think it's a lot of fun. I think people can get saddled into who they are in their lives just based on how their voice comes out of their mouth. Do you agree with me? Like if you meet a woman who's about this tall and she talks like this and all of her friends talk like this and she's lived on the Upper East Side for 75,000 years, that woman's gonna do nothing but return shit to Bloomingdale's for the rest of her life. That's her mission based on her voice. Do you agree? But if she wanted to be like one of those like late night phone sex operator chicks, right? Could you imagine? What am I wearing? Ah. Uh, well, my blouse is very sheer and um, I'm wearing a Gloria Vanderbilt pantsuit and I'm very moist. Um, I lose you on the moist line. And then I, I heard this really tough Puerto Rican chick on the, on the bus the other day in Brooklyn. She was so awesome. I kept trying to picture like what her life was like outside of where we were. She goes, yo, so I'm thinking about going into medicine. You know what I'm saying? Because those motherfuckers make a lot of money. Shit, right? So I was trying to picture her as like my cardiologist. Like maybe like take a picture of her heart. Like, you know, she walks out with my chart and says, yo, so we was like looking at pictures of your ticker. Okay, all right, so. So I'm thinking your heart's supposed to be going like ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, right? Like on a regular, consistent basis and shit. You know what I'm saying? And instead, it's like bam, 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 like extra defibrillations and shit. So we're gonna need to start cutting you. You know what I'm saying? Cause like otherwise you're gonna be going like bam and shit, right? Hey, I'm Veronica Moses. You guys ready for a great show? Yeah. Let's get that energy going. I'm so excited to bring up your next act. This guy's fantastic. He won the funniest uh, comedian on the East Coast competition at Mohegan Sun. Let's hear from Mike Keegan, everybody. Mike Keegan! Yeah. All right, keep it going for Veronica Mosey, guys. She's phenomenal. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming out. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm excited to be here. I love St. Patrick's Day. It's one of my favorite days of the year. It's like fond memories. I used to go over to my grandmother's house, listen to Irish music, listen to her stories about going over to Ireland. And like, I have, I'm, I'm Irish and Italian. So like, it's totally different visiting my grandparents. Like I go over to my Italian family. Like I'm 31 years old. I've never seen my Italian grandmother outside of the kitchen, ever. You know, it's just like, I think they have a Murphy bed that folds out of the oven. But like, you go over to the Irish side, I go over to my Irish family, they're just like, all right, throw this piece of meat into some boiling water. We got fucking drinking to do. That's, you know. <laughs> That's what happens when you go over there, you know. I don't like I don't like that stereotype though. I don't like I don't like that being associated with Irish always drinking. I don't like you know. Like I was over at a party o over the summer, and uh, you know somebody came up to me and they asked me my name. And I said my name was Mike Keegan. And they go, oh, you must be drunk. I said, oh, because I have an Irish last name, I must be drunk. He's like, no, because you're naked and you're covered in vomit. <laughs> That's why we assume that. Oh my God, I'm excited to be here. I'm really happy to be back in New York though. I've been on the road for the last three weeks doing comedy. So it's back, good to be back in New York. Uh, you learn a lot when you're on the road doing comedy. One of the biggest things I've learned is no matter what size you are, no matter what kind of shape you might be in, you want to feel good about your body, go to a state fair in West Virginia. Oh my God, right? I'm the skinny guy at a state fair in West Virginia. And most times I'm the hottest chick. That's, that's West Virginia. <laughs> That's West Virginia. Oh my God, like a year ago, I got invited to do a show at a state fair in West Virginia, because my fucking career is going awesome. And uh, <laughs> I get invited out there. I have these horrible directions that they emailed to me. The last thing on the direction said, make a left after the Italian restaurant. So I'm driving for an hour and a half up and down this one main road that they have there. Couldn't find the Italian restaurant. I finally called the venue. I said, can you at least give me the name of the Italian restaurant? I can't find it. The guy on the other end of the line in West Virginia goes, Oh, you're looking for the Italian restaurant. That's Domino's. <laughs> Domino's Pizza's their fucking Italian restaurant. 
an hour and a half, I was driving up and down this road. I passed the Domino's 14 times, right? I stopped there to eat three times. I was, oh my God. I get there, I finally get there. I got to the state fair and I had a little time to kill before the show. So I stopped at a booth that they have there. And what they sell at this booth is fried butter. Fried butter is a thing in West Virginia, right? And I was just trying to be a little bit healthy. I was just eating a regular stick of butter. Right? <laughs> and there's these three gigantic guys. They're sitting around this booth. They're shoveling fried butter in their mouths and they didn't like me. They didn't like the skinny guy. They did not like me. And I heard all the little comments that they were making each other. They didn't like me. They pointed at me. One of them goes, oh, would you look at Mr. Fitness over there? Look at him walking around all unassisted like. That's a, that's a thing. One of the boys at me, he goes, who's he trying to impress eating all those vegetables? I was eating a corn dog. in <laughs> West Virginia. West Virginia, man. Like I said, I'm also Italian. So uh, Italian, my Italian family's cool. Like every year, uh, my mother has a, a big Italian Thanksgiving at the house. She has Thanksgiving every year. And every year, my mother's sister, Josephine, comes over. I call her Aunt Kardashian, because she's got a big fat ass and she only likes the dark meat. That's... <laughs> I know we're a little sensitive about the Kardashians in this audience here, but like, like Veronica mentioned it, like, like, like can we, seriously, can we be done with the whole family already? I'm so sick of them, they, they're like herpes. They go away, they come back, they go away, they come, right? Right? Remember Kim Kardashian, she went away for a little while, then she came back, she did that nude photo shoot. Remember that? That whole week, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing a picture of Kim Kardashian's giant ass. Right, I think his name is Kanye West, right? <laughs> oh my God, that whole family, they're horrible, that whole family. Look what they did to Bruce Jenner. Look what they did to him, right? Look what they did to him. Look, I grew up in the 1980s. In 1985, Bruce Jenner was the man. Now he's not even a man, right? <laughs> I guess you can only live with that family for so long before you're like, I'll never be half the man that Khloe Kardashian is, I guess. <laughs> no, that's, uh, like, my family's Italian, so every year uh, we have a big Italian family reunion in upstate New York. We go up there every year since I was a little kid. I notice now that I'm a little bit older, I spend most of my time at my family reunions looking at my attractive cousins, trying to figure out, like, how related we are, <laughs> you know? I'm on like Ancestry.com half the day. I'm like, oh, it's my mother's cousin's daughter. That's fine. I could... but, <laughs> but it's cool. I love my family reunions because every year we eat a lot of food. You eat all day long. All day long you eat a lot of food. So we got a little health conscious over the years. We get in a little physical activity in after dinner. We play the national sport of Italy. Anybody? Bocce ball. Bocce ball, the laziest game in the world, right? If you're not familiar with bocce ball, what you do is you take a tiny little ball and you toss it ever so gently. Then you take a slightly bigger ball and you roll it to try to get it near the little ball. That's it. We think we can burn 25,000 calories by rolling a little wooden ball 30 yards. <laughs> exactly, exactly, when you yell at each other, right? Like we think we can burn 25,000 calories by rolling a little wooden ball 30 yards. If you're over 50 years old, you don't even stand up to do it. You sit in a lawn chair. You know, it's just the fucking laziest game. Like I have two uncles that run the bocce ball game every year, my uncle Vinny and my uncle Tuna. We call him Uncle Tuna because he's built like a tuna can. He's like three times wider than he is tall. Right? He's one of those fucking guys. But uh, they're hilarious together. Last time we were playing, my Uncle Vinny was getting ready to take his shot. And he's taking forever to make his shot. He's measuring the wind, he's measuring the angles. Uncle Tuna goes, Vin, would you take your freaking shot already? You're taking forever, we don't have all day. Uncle Vinny goes, Tuna, my wife is right over there. She's watching me. I gotta make the perfect shot here. Uncle Tuna goes, Vin, there ain't no fucking way you can hit her from all the way over here. <laughs> That's, they're fun, man. I love my family. Because I'm, I'm what you call a stay-at-home son. <laughs> right? right? Like, I'm not married. I'm Italian. I still live at home. That's what you do. My mother's always like, Mike, when are you going to get married? Move out of the house. She asked me as well. She's cooking my dinner, folding my laundry, and balancing my checkbook all at the same time. Like, you're not getting rid of me, you fucking enabler. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Oh, I love my mother. My, mother, my mother's a little Italian lady. She's getting a little bit older. She's doing some weird shit. Like uh, last Tuesday, I had to borrow $20 from my mother because I'm a comedian. And, uh, <laughs> I think people think comedians make money because I'm on the road a lot. I do a lot of shows. Like I made $52 last week and it was only that much because I found $12 on the floor at one of my shows. But uh, no, I had to borrow $20 from my mother. She goes, Mike, just go in my purse, help yourself. You find $20 in there. 
So I'm feeling around in her purse, and I feel what feels like a small pistol. And I figured it was one of my nephew's toys because they were over the house the other day. My mother goes, Mike, be careful, that's loaded. Uh. I'm like, Mom, why are you walking around with a loaded pistol? My Italian mother, she looks at me and she goes, it's because of rape. <laughs> Do you know how unsettling it is knowing that my mother's out there raping people at gunpoint? <laughs> Oh my God, it's horrible. I am uh, I'm American, so I'm unemployed. <laughs> like unemployment's pretty cool at first though. You get that free check every week. I got a lot done. I got my car detailed. I caught up on all my DVRs and shit. Like I got shit done. But after a while you get bored. You catch yourself doing some weird shit. Like uh, last week, I wrote a four page letter to Tropicana Orange Juice. <laughs> Just to let them know how much I enjoy their product. <laughs> four pages front and back. You know what's weird? I wrote the letter out, I didn't even type it. Like, that's something a serial killer does. Like, I have serial killer time in my hands. I had a whole page dedicated to pulp versus no pulp. That's the kind of time I got. I guess, I, no pulp. I guess, uh, no, 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 I'm recently single now. I'm back on the market. I'm recently single. My ex-girlfriend and I were together for eight years. We were together for almost a decade. And everyone always thought we were gonna get married because we were a cute couple. Like, she was beautiful, she was tall and thin. We looked like the number 10. And, uh, <laughs> Like, I know, I know why we're not together anymore. Like, I'm not good at talking to women that I'm in a relationship with. Like, towards the end, she asked me, she's like, Mike, if we get married and I put on a lot of weight and let myself go, would you still love me? I said, of course I would still love you. I'd miss you, but I'd still love you. I'm not sticking around. I'm not that good of a fucking guy. But uh, now that I'm single, though, I'm back on the market. So I, I joined the gym. I joined Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is awesome because it's only $10 a month. So I never really ever have to go. I never, never feel obligated to go. Right? Right? Never realized how big of a creep I was until I joined the gym, though. Like, I always go there, I'll make sure I'm on a machine behind a girl with a nice ass and yoga pants, right? Yeah. I'll go there for an hour and a half, I won't even use a machine. <laughs> Peer into the women's locker room. And I'll sniff the stationary bicycle seats. Oh. It's the judgment-free zone. You're not allowed to judge the things I do there. And they say it in the commercial. You know what's good? <laughs> Does anyone here go to Planet Fitness? Does anyone go to Planet Fitness? You yes, do. you go to Planet Fitness. You know, when I go, I go the first Monday of every month. Oh, pizza yeah. night. They have pizza night at the fucking gym. It's amazing. You know what's awesome? It's $10 a month to go there. I eat $30 worth of pizza. I make $20 a month going to Planet Fitness. I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> so I gotta wind up, before I get out of here, let's talk about porn real quick. Because I love talking about porn. <laughs> I love, that's how my friends know me. They know me like kind of as the porn guy. You know, I watch a lot of it. I watch a weird amount of porn. But like, I was at my friend's house about a couple weeks ago and he was searching through the channels and the porn channel came on and all you saw was a close-up of some guy's balls. And I was like, oh shit, that's Peter North. <laughs> the camera pans up, it was the porn star, Peter North. My friend's like, Mike, did you just recognize that guy just by seeing his balls? I'm like, yeah, because you know, I watch a lot of this stuff and it's a known fact, like no two guys have the same set of balls. They're unique, like fingerprints or snowflakes, I guess. <laughs> all these all the new porn that comes out though, it's all free. It's all it's all instantly streamed to your phone. It's not like when we were younger, right? We used to have to work for our porn. You used to have the big bulky VHS tapes you used to have to hide. You used to have to know a kid with a weird uncle. Like that's the only way we got to watch porn. But now it's all free, it's all instantly streamed to your phone. And uh, it has cool features on it. It has a keyword search at the top. You can search any kind of porn you want and thousands of videos will come up. Which is a good feature, except sometimes I'll be home, I'll be drunk in like a weird place and I'll try to find something. They won't be able to find the kind of porn I'm looking for, right? And a little box will pop up and it'll say, sorry, we can't find anything to meet your criteria. Might as well just say, sorry, sir, you're a sick fuck. <laughs> the authorities are on their way. <laughs> right? I think I'm borrowing my neighbor's Wi-Fi. Like I borrow my neighbor's Wi-Fi. He's not allowed near playgrounds anymore. <laughs> yes. But the last weird feature before I get out of here, if you notice all these free porn videos that you watch, or I watch all the time, all the free videos, if you look on the bottom right corner, there's a share to Facebook option. Because I can't tell you how many times I'm watching porn, I'm just like, oh, you know who else would enjoy this hardcore interracial gangbang? My friends and family. <laughs> Guys, I've been Mike Keegan. Enjoy the rest of the show. You've been awesome. Have a great night. from Mike Keegan, everybody. Mike Keegan. We're going to keep this show rolling right, right along. Our next comic, you're going to love her. You've seen her on a Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. Let's hear for Sean Elaine, everybody. Sean Elaine. That worked out, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Hi. What's up? Do you guys remember me from Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn from 10 years ago? No? I need a new TV credit. No bad. Hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, thank you. I am Irish. I also have a drinking problem, but I'm in a program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wore lipstick for you guys. <laughs> thank you. I'm saying thank you a lot. Uh, I like wearing lipstick, it's fun, it's pretty. Uh, but then all day long I'm worried that I have lipstick on my teeth and every time I smile or laugh, I'm like. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so awkward. And then I try and be brave, I'm like, just show your teeth, Shauna. They were expensive, show your teeth. And then I'm like. <laughs> So, um, have you guys been riding the subway a lot lately? <laughs> yes, thank you. Very sense. It's transitioned right into that. I was on the subway today and I gave a lady a seat that I thought had a cane, but it was a mop. No. I didn't have on my glasses. I was, I was just standing there staring at her in my seat and thinking about what a nice person I am. I was like, I'm, I'm such a nice person. <laughs> and then her cane morphed into the mop that it actually is. And then I was like, oh my God, just give her my seat for no reason. What the fuck is that? It was just nice for no reason. <clears throat> and then I was like, how can I ask for my seat back now? <laughs> God, can you imagine? Can you imagine if someone gave you their seat and you had no idea why and you're just sitting there with your mop. And then I came up to you and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I thought you were handicapped. <laughs> can I sit back down? I had Chipotle for lunch. Please. Anyway, I just stood there. Um, I have a, a, a romantic problem. Like I, I, I'm, I'm like a hopeless romantic, but I'm really fickle. So I fall in love, and then three minutes later, I'm like, ugh, I didn't know your lip did that. <laughs> no, no, we're done. We're done here. And this happened a couple weeks ago. I was on the subway. All I do is ride the subway. And this gorgeous, this gorgeous black guy got on the subway, right? He had on this beautiful suit and this nice coat. And he sat down next to me. And then he smiled at me. And then I smiled at him. And then I was like, oh my God, we're going to be together. Oh my God. And then I started having the crazy woman fantasy, you know? I was like, oh my God, our babies are gonna have such cute hair. And he has on such a nice suit. He probably has a job and health insurance so we can get started on our family right away and we can get married on the beach. I always wanted to get married on the beach, right? Like going crazy. And then he yawned. He yawned and he was like, uh, 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 uh. Right? And I was like, okay, we are not going to be together. <laughs> what the fuck was that? We are not going to be together. I don't know what that was. And I couldn't stop thinking about, like, who are this guy's friends? Who are his friends? That not one of his friends has ever been like, do that thing where at the end of your yawn, it looks like you're jerking off into your own mouth. Like, take it down a notch. Take it down a notch. He's like, this guy has terrible friends. He can't be the father of my children. <sighs> and then he got up at the next stop and got off. And I was like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and he turned around like, and I was like, ah, you know what you did. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I have a boyfriend. Um, you guys are like, no, you don't. <laughs> I do I have a boyfriend. He's older. He's 51. He's vintage. Um, he's vintage. He's my new boyfriend, but he's old. So he's my new old boyfriend. Okay, this is what's weird about my new boy. He makes teeth, which is great. He makes choppers. So I guess if anyone needs any, you can follow me on Twitter and I'll help you get together with some teeth. 
Anyway, so um, he's got kids that are older, that are in their early 20s. Okay, and he says that his kids are great, but I've never met them because they're both in jail. (laughs) 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 They're both in jail. Um, He's like, my kids are great. And I'm like, but your great kids are both in jail. Um, The good part is they're in the same one, so they're together. That's nice. So they're together in the same jail, wearing orange jumpsuits together. I guess the family that does time together wears orange jumpsuits together. Anyway, okay, this is a crazy part. Okay, so his son is getting out of jail tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday, right? Okay, so his son is getting out of jail tomorrow, and he wants me to meet him on Sunday. He wants to take us to lunch and meet each other, right? And I'm very nervous. And he's like, why are you so nervous? And I'm like, what am I gonna say to your kid that just got out of jail? I don't know jail people. I don't know people that just, what am I supposed to say to him? Am I gonna be like, so how was jail? (laughs) Did you have a good time in jail? Do you miss your friends in jail? Did you learn your lesson in jail? Okay, you know what I'm really afraid of? I'm afraid that his son is gonna be really hot. (laughs) I'm gonna be more attracted to him than I am his father. Won't that be weird if I'm like, oh my God, you're like a hot young version of your dad. (laughs) And you've been very bad. (laughs) And you need to be punished. (laughs) My boyfriend will be like, this lunch just got awkward. (laughs) So, um... (laughs) <laughs> you guys are going to town on that fucking food. How high did you get before you got here? <laughs> She's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> enjoy. All right. So um, I have a day job. <sighs> okay, this is the thing. I sell clothes to old ladies on the Upper East Side, which isn't as fun as it sounds. Oh my God, okay, this one old lady, they're rich old ladies, they're very sweet. They always have a lot of plastic surgery. This one lady came in and she had just like, you know, like so much work done. And she was like, how do I look? I just got work done even though I'm only 53. And I was like, you look so good for 53. And then in my head, I was like, who lies about being 53? She was like 80. I was like, you have to be so old to lie about being old, right? 53. So um, I was training a new girl at that job, this new girl, this young girl. And uh, we have to, this is really boring, but... We have to send out this email to everyone that works there at the end of the day. It's called an end of day report. (laughs) And uh, so I had to tell her my email address, right? Okay. And it's a hotmail address, okay? A good hotmail address, right? And she was like, oh my God, you have hotmail? (laughs) Who has hotmail anymore? And thank you, thank you. Do you know what she has? A mustache. I was like, you have a fucking mustache. What the fuck is that? Who has those? A fucking fluffy mustache. Not bleached, nothing, just a mustache. Don't make fun of my fucking hotmail address. She's beautiful, this girl too. She has these like beautiful exotic green eyes. And I was like, what happened when she was growing up? Her mother was like, you're so beautiful. Just play up the eyes. No one will ever notice that mustache. (laughs) Fuck her. (laughs) So um, I have a dog. Thank you. I love this dog so much. She is my baby. This dog is my baby. She only has one eye. She, uh, I rescued her. It's not like I dropped her and her eye fell out. She came that way. She only has one eye, but it makes her look really funny. Like it looks like this, right? Like she's like this. She's a, she's part Chihuahua and miniature Whippet, I think. So she's a really funny combination of dogs. And um, I take her to the park all the time. And people always stare at me so crazy when I have this dog. And I don't know if it's because of the one eye or because I'm breastfeeding her, but um, she's my baby. Gonna do what's best for my baby. Oh my God. I'm not the only woman who does it. I've seen other, have you guys seen this? Women breastfeeding their dogs in the park. I've seen it. 
I went to bond with this woman the other day who was breastfeeding her dog. And I, but as I got closer, oh my God, I realized she just had a really ugly baby. <laughs> Oh, I know. I was like, oh my God, you should get a dog. <laughs> Your baby's so ugly. <laughs> oh my God, you guys have been so much fun. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Sean Elaine, everybody. Sean Elaine. Are you having fun? This is a good, good St. Pat's Day. Have, have a good time up here. <clears throat> I have to say, guys, I'm a... I'm a little bit, uh, I'm excited about the summer coming. You guys excited about the summer coming? We happy about this? A little sick of this weather? Um, <clears throat> but I, the one thing I don't like about the summer, I used to live in a really, uh, really shitty neighborhood in Brooklyn, and uh, I have kind of nightmares about the summer sometimes because uh, of this sound. Remember, de plink, 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 the ice cream trucks. Now, like I said, crappy neighborhood in Brooklyn, and uh, my ice cream truck used to come around 11.30 at night when the gangs took a break, and... <laughs> Thank you very much. Perfect. I love it. And this one, this one played Cop Goes the Weasel, which sucks on its own. Never mind when it never gets to the refrain ever. So this is what you'd hear in Brooklyn, 1130 at night. And the whole neighborhood's like, somebody pop the fucking weasel! You guys ready for your next act? Let's get that energy going. I'm so excited to bring up this guy. Fantastic. You saw him on Letterman. Let's hear it for Sean Donnelly, everybody. Sean Donnelly! <laughs> that was awesome. Good enough for Veronica, everybody. Let her hear it. She's awesome! She has an adorable baby. I saw it just now. How are you guys? You having a good time? Some of you don't think that I'm the next comic, do you? Do some of you think I just dropped off the beer for tonight and the kegs? Some of you think I just have my truck parked outside? Like it's part of my bucket list or something like that? Is that what you're thinking? I can't not look like this, okay? I have a condition. It's called manual labor face, all right? So I just wear these clothes to match my face. That's, I can't come in here in a tuxedo. You'd be like, what fucked up funeral did you go to? <laughs> I know exactly what I look like. I'll tell you why. Because the other day, I walked into a store, and I saw two other fat bearded guys. And the minute I walked in the store, they both nodded at me at the same time. Just like, you're home, brother. Don't worry about it. This is your mother's ship coming to pick you up. And I nodded back? What the fuck was I nodding back at? I nodded right back. I'm like, yes! I'm just nodding back at other fat bearded guy shit. I'm like, I have the nachos. I brought nachos, yes. Yes, my mother will drive us to WrestleMania. Yes, right. That's exactly it. <laughs> Some of you are nice. Some of you are you're weird. You're a weird guy. Your arms, I don't know what you thought you were coming to tonight, but not a comedy show. I'll tell you that right now. Your arms are folded, you're like, fuck this fat asshole. I don't want to look like this. This is not a fuckable look, okay? This is not, I'm not going to be gross about it. It's not, it's not a hot, fuckable look. When I was single, I would go to bars, and women would tell me I'd look like I'd be a good dad. Ooh. What do you say back to that? You can't say anything back to that. You can't be like, well, daddy wants to buy you a drink. How about that? You want to get fucked up with daddy tonight? What do you say, huh? Shots on daddy, there we go. I don't want to look like, I want to lose weight. I'm trying to lose weight right now, but I only say that when I'm full. That's the only time that I say that. That's the only time you say that. When I'm full, I'm like, I should really lose some weight. When I'm hungry, I'm like, I'll eat your freaking hat. I don't give a shit. I don't care if there's trans fats in that hat. Give me the hat. I eat terrible foods. I'm a gross eater. Are you a healthy eater? You, you are? Yeah. Piece of shit. Yeah, right, exactly. Don't you hate your healthy friends? They try to push their healthy bullshit on you? You ever have a friend that thinks a milkshake's a big deal? You know these people? They come up to you, they go, you wanna be bad today? You wanna be bad? Let's, be, let's have milkshakes, let's be really bad today. And I'm just like, yeah, I drink milkshakes every fucking day of my life. I don't give a shit, give me two milkshakes, I don't care. I had a milkshake the other day, I swear to God. I swear to God, like you're not gonna believe me I had a milkshake the other day. 
This is what I had for dinner. I had fried chicken, french fries, and a milkshake. That's what I had. That's disgusting. That shouldn't even be allowed. And it wasn't even a good milkshake. It was like one of those thick milkshakes where you can't get the milkshake out of the milkshake. Don't you hate those? You ever try to talk to somebody while you're drinking one of those? You look like a psychopath. You're like, yeah, then what they say? <laughs> Your eyeball falls out, it's gross. It's disgusting. I eat disgusting foods. I'm, gro I'm so gross. I I'm trying to get healthier now. I'm trying not to eat bread. You ever try to do that? Yep. It's fucking impossible. You purposely try to trick yourself when you don't eat bread. Like the other day, I googled our biscuits bread. That's what, that's what I wrote. <laughs> I knew that shit when I ate bread, I'll tell you right now. But the minute I stopped eating bread, I'm like, are they really though? Or are they like a bread substitute of some sort? I'm like, is flatbread like diet bread? Is that what that is? I eat gross foods, I'm married. You guys married? You are? How long? A year? He checks. He's like, year? Yeah, year. <laughs> I like being married. I want to have kids. Veronica has a kid. I'm dying to have babies. I want to have a baby, but here's the thing. When you're married for a couple years and you don't have kids, your friends who have kids try to bully you into having a kid. It's true. Every parent, they always say this. They go, there's never a right time to have a kid. Just do it. There's never a right time to have a kid. And maybe that's true. Maybe there's never a right time to have a kid, but there's definitely a wrong fucking time to have a kid. Like, if you're still paying for shit with change, that's a wrong time to have a kid. When you're buying sandwiches with Sacagawea dollars, that's a wrong time to have a kid. I'll tell you this much, if I have kids, I'm not dressing those kids cool. I'm not doing that, I'll tell you right now. When I was a kid, I had to wear embarrassing clothes when I was a kid. Didn't you wear embarrassing clothes as a kid? I think you should have to wear embarrassing clothes. As I think it should be a rite of passage, right? When I was a kid, I had a shirt that just had my name in front of it. said, Sean, like this. Just right for the kidnapping. What's your name, Sean? Yeah, I'm Sean. <laughs> I'll go with you, I'm sure. How'd you know that? That's a lucky guess. What do you got, a van? It's a nice van. Check out that van. <laughs> I had a matching belt. I had a belt that had my name on it. How lame is that? Have you ever been beaten with a belt that has your name on it? It's embarrassing. My mom bought me those clothes. I think she honestly wanted me to get kidnapped. I think her next step is to get me a hat with my favorite types of candy all over the hat. The times I get out of school in my backpack. <laughs> it's crazy, I don't know. I like being married. Married's pretty cool, it's all right, whatever. The fight sucks, it's whatever. You know, everybody says it's, everybody says they love it. It's, it's like, it's good and it's bad. It's like, it's like awesome and shitty at the same time, you know? It's crazy. I get embarrassed in front of my wife sometimes. You ever get embarrassed in front of your wife? All the time, right? Yeah, some guys won't, won't admit that. At least you'll admit that. Like the other day, I got caught on the toilet without any toilet paper, which sucks. And you guys are being weird about that, but everybody in this room has been in that situation. You don't know what to do in that situation. You're like, do I just wait here? And hopefully toilet paper just magically appears out of nowhere? You assess the value of every item in your bathroom? <laughs> You're like, Q-tips? No, that would take too long. <laughs> You're like, how attached are we to this bath towel? Can I use... <laughs> Can I use this bath towel? This is a fancy wedding bath towel. Can I use this? This is one of these not don't touch bath towels. What I do is this. I call out to my wife for toilet paper. That's what I do. I think a lot of guys do that. And my wife, she loves me, so she brings me toilet paper, but she doesn't want to see me on the toilet. That's disgusting. So when she brings me toilet paper, she hands it to me like she's feeding an alligator. Like she's going, here, take it. Take the toilet paper. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. It's like a stick. That she There's a reason for that. It's because you never get toilet paper in a normal way in the bathroom. It's true. I know it's gross, but it's true. Nobody would just, right, nobody would just walks in and goes, here's your toilet paper. The best way you get toilet paper in the bathroom is the door opens and a phantom hand comes in. Just a weird floating hand comes in. You don't know whose hand that is? That could be anybody's hand. That could be Hitler's hand. You don't know whose hand that is? You don't give a shit whose hand that is. You need that toilet paper. And the other way you get toilet paper is the door opens and a roll of toilet paper comes flying your head at 90 miles per hour. But you fucked that part up for me, didn't you? You fucking joke jumper. 
I learned that in the bathroom. The other thing I learned in the bathroom is that you don't know how much you pee until you pee into something that's not a toilet. <laughs> so you know, you know, I know it's gross again, but you know what I'm talking about, right? You ever been, stu you ever been stuck in traffic? You're like, there's no way I'll fill up this Gatorade bottle. That's not gonna work. Three seconds in, you're like, there's gonna be an emergency in the back of your car. I'm gonna piss all over the back seat of your car. <laughs> I don't know if girls know this, but guys can stop peeing in the middle of peeing. It takes three years off our life, but we can do it. It's very painful. Let me ask you this. Can girls do that, yes or no? Yes. yes. See, some say yes, some say no. I've asked before, okay? But I ask on stage, not like an on-the-street creepy kind of way. I don't walk into them like, excuse me, miss. I'm a comedian doing research for a joke. When you're peeing, can you just stop peeing out of nowhere? You check yes or no on my palm right now? Thank you, that's your, that's his favorite joke of the night, this guy. The rest of you are like, you are gross as shit, Sean. I don't know, I, I gotta figure shit out. I, I, I like being married, I kinda wish I was gay, I, I, a little bit. I'll tell you why, because guys who look like me that are gay, they're called bears. That's fucking badass. That's like my nine year old dream come true. I'm straight, they just call me fat, that's all that is. Gay guys are awesome, man. They have a name for every different type of body type. They're so much more accepting. They have bears, they have cubs, they have otters, they have twinks, they have chipmunks. It's like a gay magical forest, it's amazing. My wife comes up to me, she's like, I want you to lose weight. I'm like, well, my friend Ronaldo thinks I'm a bear. What about them? What'd you say? Do you, what do you think this is right now? Do you think this is a class about fucking wooded animals? All right, how drunk are you that you think you're in third grade right now? Learning about chill. Look at this fucking asshole in the front. What's a chipmunk? Tell me now in the middle of your shit. Do it. I don't know what that is. How do you not know what a chipmunk is? How much beer did you drink that you forgot what a fucking chipmunk is? He's like, I don't know math anymore and I don't know chipmunks. You don't, and, oh, I don't know. I don't know either. I just know I've heard it before. I think it's a gay guy with really big teeth. I think that's basically what it is. That's my like, guess. I don't know. I told you I want to be gay. I'm not fucking gay. What'd you say? You know what the, oh, you know what the animal is. Uh, okay. This is a conversation that could have happened about an hour from now. Right? I mean, <laughs> I know I'm very, I'm very likable guy. You thought you could just talk to me. No, I'm just fucking around, dude. What's your name, dude? Matt, what do you do for a living? Construction? Oh, you look like a construction guy. I wish I did construction. I, I'm pretty good at this job. Like I, this, this job, I stay on it because I'm decent at it. But I sucked at every other job I had. I, got, I was a doorman. I was a doorman. I got fired from being a doorman for leaving the door open. That's why I got fired. I just did half the job. I just left it and walked away. I worked at a blockbuster for a long time, which is pretty much like saying you were a blacksmith at this point. That's the same thing. When you tell people black, Blockbuster, they hear 18th century gold prospector. That's what they hear. <laughs> they're like, you're like, I work at a Blockbuster. They hear, I worked at a Blockbuster. <laughs> I met a guy, I wish I had a more badass job because I met a guy the other day. It was an old guy and he walks up to me, he goes like this. He introduces himself like this. He goes, Bill Thompson, construction, 35 years. That's how he introduced himself to me. You can only do that if you have a badass job and you've been there a long time. Like, I can't walk up to you and go, Sean Donnelly, Sunglass Hut, nine weeks. <laughs> well, not the actual hut, the kiosk in the middle of the mall. I'm hoping to work my way up to the hut one day. My manager says if I'm good, I can get to the fucking hut. I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna figure shit out. We gotta see, I live in uh, Brooklyn, like Veronica does. Uh, anybody else Brooklyn or no? Yeah, yeah man. Woo! I live near a White Castle. Do you guys know White Castle? <laughs> yeah. What you do? You, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I, people love White Castle. They hate White Castle. I was walking by the White Castle the other day, and I overheard these two guys talking. And one guy goes, the other one he goes, Hey man, you ever have White Castle? It's amazing. And the other guy goes, No, I've only had it from the supermarket. I've never had it fresh. That's what he said. <laughs> Check out the palette on this guy, huh? I think Top Chef is missing a contestant. I wonder if that guy goes on a date and he's like, we're going to a fusion restaurant. It's a KFC and a Taco Bell. <laughs> you guys are pretty cool. You guys are nice people. I don't know. I, I, I go to a thug barbershop in my neighborhood. Do you know what that is? 
the thug barbershop. The thug barbershop is the only place that you go to get your hair cut, and right after he's done, the guy who just cut your hair makes fun of the haircut that he just gave you. Like, I was there the other day, the guy cuts my hair. Right afterwards, he looks at me and goes, oh, shit. He goes, you look like Bobby from King of the Hills, son. I'm like, you just did that. That was you. Do you know how unprofessional this is? You can't do that. You're a professional barber. You guys are married? You dating? You're friends? You're in a cult? Are you together? I know you're together. I, I, the only thing that sucks about being married is that sex has kind of slowed down for us, which happens in marriages. That happens sometimes. I wouldn't even mind it as much, but my wife is awful at giving me excuses about why she doesn't want to have sex with me. Like the other day I wanted to have sex, and she goes there, she goes, I can't, I have to wake up early tomorrow. That's what she said. That's a terrible excuse. Six minutes? You can't spare six minutes for this? <laughs> what about this body makes you think you're waking up at noon tomorrow to be done having sex? This isn't a fuck you all night, wake up late tomorrow kind of sex body. This isn't good sex. This is pale, fat, Irish depressing sex. This isn't strawberries and ice cream and chocolate sauce and tickle fights type of sex. This is blood pudding type of sex. This is saltine cracker type of sex. This isn't Fifty Shades of Grey type of sex. This is Angela's Ashes type of sex. <laughs> the only way that you're waking up late tomorrow after we have sex is if we have sex and then we watch all of the Godfather movies. <laughs> all right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. up for Sean Donnelly there. Uh, my name's John McDonough and I host a radio show on WBAI with Maliki McCourt and I also drive a yellow cab for the past 35 years. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm white and I speak English. Now you're wondering how do, you, how do I know that? Four times a day when I get, drive in the cab people get in they go hey you're white and you speak English and then they want to know What's your job like? So I'm saying, you people are starting out, all right? Sit right where you are now for the next 12 hours, piss into your pint glass, and have the person behind you vomit. Now you're a yellow cab driver. So I'm here to introduce Maliki McCourt, and what can you say about Maliki that the police, the Catholic Church, and the St. Patrick's Day Parade haven't said about him already? Since Maliki's been in New York, he's done it all. Written books, he's done Broadway, he was on the HBO series, Oz. He's done everything. But the one thing he said he hasn't done is stand-up comedy, and that's bullshit. Because when Maliki landed on the boat on Hell's Kitchen, he had to do stand-up to get by that customs guy to get here into New York. And even when Maliki's laying down, he's doing stand-up. When he does radio, he's doing stand-up. If he was doing yoga on his head, he's doing stand-up. So tonight, the first time Maliki's gonna do stand-up? I don't think so. I think it's a lifetime of stand-up. And I give you the one and only Maliki McCord. barely sit up, not to mind stand up. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, John, um, for that obituary. It's good to hear it while you're alive. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm at the stage, there are three stages of life, which are uh, youth, middle age, and you're looking great. <laughs> I'm at the latter here. Anyway, any day above ground is a good one. And I was wondering uh, when uh, Bruce asked me would I participate in a stand-up festival, I said, what the fuck am I going to talk about? I mean, I can't talk fast or I cannot uh, make uh, funny songs, which I see a lot of folks do. And uh, so I decided that I'd better uh, just speak. And, uh, 
as you might gather, I am from Brooklyn. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you laugh, I am. I was born in Brooklyn. And uh, I was uh, taken to Ireland uh, when I was a small fellow, about three. And that's where I did grow up. And uh, I was brought up uh, Catholic. And um, I'm retired from Catholicism now. I have a pension from the Vatican. Uh, they asked me to get the fuck out, you know. <laughs> there we are. But, um, and then the, the, this whole thing which occurred today, uh, this uh, Patrick fellow, uh, interesting character, uh, Megan, Megan, Megwin, Megwin Suckert is his real name. And he was the son of a priest and a grand grandson of, of a priest. And they have these signs on Fifth Avenue, with the, the, all those people that march up, they march up and uh, stagger down, uh, third. And um, he, he, uh, they have this uh, England out of Ireland. Now England is where it is, and Ireland is where it is, and England is not in Ireland. But this fucker comes to Ireland and ruins a perfectly good pagan civilization. No, and the first Englishman to come fucks it up. And they're saying England out of Ireland. Well, get that fucker out of Ireland. And uh, the whole thing went with him. I am an atheist, thank God. And um, anyway, I've been studying the Bible. And uh, I've come to conclusion. Now, they had lots of problems with gay folks. They're not letting them into the parade. And then that kind of thing. So, um, uh, now, I have come to the conclusion that uh, when the, the God, whatever, that fellow that causes all this, that, that schizophrenic fucking lunatic, you, know, you, you never know what he wants. Right, they pray for rain, you bring sunshine, you bring sunshine, but, and he sends you. And they're always saying, you know, you know those guys running around saying, God bless America? Every fucking time they say that, did some bombers come and do the World Trade Center, and Notre Dame loses, and all kinds of things. No, people are always praying. Don't they know this fucker knows everything in advance? I mean, in the courts they have, in God we trust, right? They should try him. Because if you know about crime in advance, you're a collaborator. <laughs> so uh, that is it. And then what comes uh, creation, comes creation, right? So apparently he, it's always a he, he's wandering around and gets lonely and decides to make humanity. So he gets, he's made the world and the animals and everything that creeps and crawls and uh, picks up a lump of mud and shapes it and uh, into man, sticks a little cock on it and uh, that's where all the trouble started. And then, and then he sees the snake is observing him and he decides he better do something because you see, if God were straight, he'd have made a woman. God is gay. He made a man. And the snake is looking at him and saying, ha, 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 I got you. So then he cuts out a rib and makes a woman. Now, we know scientifically that DNA, is his rib, is 100% Adam. And therefore, uh, he's fucking himself. <laughs> And they're talking about uh, gay marriage. They're getting upset about that. But is, is that as bad as fucking yourself? But anyway, there's one thing about... Um, <coughs> now go and fuck yourself, yes. <laughs> um, the, 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 uh, but uh, St. Patrick did one thing which was good, if he did do it at all, which was he uh, chased all the snakes out of Ireland. And they came over here and became conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> The Tea Party and so Now, not all conservatives are stupid, but all stupid people are conservative. And, they say, you know, no. and if a guy acts, a conservative acts stupid, talks stupid, don't let that fool you, he is stupid. <laughs> and there it be. So anyway, um, 
We have, uh, I was thinking a lot about politics that are going on. Now, governments are like baby diapers, you know. They should be changed often. And, <laughs> and for the same reason. And as we know, they get full of shit. And there we are. So we had a, <coughs> we had a fellow in Ireland. Uh, and he was about, he was a combination of stupidity and George Bush, and uh, what's her name, Pale and whatever her name is. And we, we went, we, we didn't have to go to the theater. We'd have to go and listen to this guy, Dan Burke. And his speeches were incredible, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, and fellow patriots, welcome to this extinguished assemblage. <laughs> Let me reiterate what I'm about to say. I see before me faces that are not here, and I hope that those who are absent will take particular note of my words today. I also miss the old faces I used to shake hands with, and I see before me faces that I thought were dead and buried faces, but thanks be to God they're alive and voting faces. Yeah. Though, mind you, too many living people is not good business for the funeral undertakers of Limerick, for they have little children who need shoes too. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today, is the poor and the problem of shoes. Now, the poor has always been with me. The poor has always been voting for me. Every man, woman, and child. It is my fond hope, then, that they remain poor. And I promise that when I am re-elected again, I will put shoes on all the poor, footless children of Limerick. <laughs> For well, it is not the poor that say the bad things about me. They have spread scandal about me. They have spread libel about me. They have even made allegations. I ask you, where are those libelers, those slanderers? Where are those alligators? <laughs> they even said that if I were hanged for my intelligence, I would die completely innocent. <laughs> that is a lie. Indeed, half of the lies they tell about me are not true, and the other three quarters are exaggerated. <laughs> for I did my bit for Ireland, and I see before me men standing who died for Ireland, and they're walking around without jobs. <laughs> and I'm going to do something about that, because I myself died for Ireland, and if necessary, I will die again and again until I am dead entirely. <laughs> And I promise to build public laboratories the length and breadth of Limerick. And not alone will we build urinals for the men. We will construct arsenals for the women. And I thank you. <laughs> I have a minute. <laughs> but uh, that, was, uh, that was our man. And of course, we always elected him. Uh, with, with, unanimously, otherwise he'd be on, uh, on the road. We had a guy named uh, Car every town in, in the world has their own characters, and we had a fellow named Gurky McMahon. And Gurky was constantly in trouble, up before the judge for drunk and disorderly, and the judge didn't recognize him one morning and said, have you been up before me previously? I don't know, sir, says Gurky, what time do you get up? And he said, <laughs> And they said to the, the, car, the, the police officer, tell that man, Gorky was chewing tobacco, tell that man to stop masticating. What? Tell him to stop masticating. The judge says stop masticating. What? He said stop masticating. Oh, well, what does that mean? Take your hands out of your pockets. <laughs> <laughs> But Gorky, Gorky um, I mean, the judge, of course, was never arrested. And he was going home one night and lost his car and had to take the bus. So anyway, uh, he got on the bus. He was drunk, the judge himself, and threw up all over himself. So he got home and um, he took off his clothes, threw them into the hamper in the lavatory and went to bed. And then he came up in the morning and went into the kitchen to have a cup of tea. And then uh, the wife went into the bathroom and found the pukey clothes, you know. And, then, and she shouted, what happened to you last night? And he, the judge realized 
what had happened. He was drunk and threw up. And he said, I was on the bus. He said, my car broke down. And uh, he said, some blackguard came on the bus and threw up all over me. But I have him in jail right now. And he's going to appear before me this morning. And I am going to give him three months in prison. And she said, well, why don't you give him six months? Why would I give him six months? Because he also took a shit in your underwear. <laughs> McCord, first time doing stand-up. What do you say? At age 53, fantastic. Wow, it's great. Great, another round of applause for Malcolm McCord, guys. Fantastic. So excited. You never know what you're gonna get here. Very excited that you guys are here to experience that. Uh, we're gonna keep the show rolling right along with our, our next comic. Uh, this guy is a best-selling author in Ireland and he just finished a tour uh, here in New York uh, State. Let's hear it for Colm O'Regan, everybody. Colm O'Regan. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, yeah, I'm calling it American Tour. I went from New York to Kansas and back to New York again, so... <laughs> I'm, I've got a tour t-shirt printed and I can reuse it for pretty much anything. Uh, so it's great to be here. I always have a sense of inferiority coming to the United States, primarily because of my teeth. Uh, you guys have great teeth here. Your healthcare is fucked, but you managed to get dental somehow, and you should be very proud of that. I just, I just feel a sense of inferiority because when I look into them, American people have the United States of teeth in their mouth. When you look into an American's mouth, it's like looking at a map of the Midwest United States. It's like Arizona, Kansas, Utah, Wyoming. Your teeth are actually like the Midwest United States. All the same size, perfectly straight lines between them and mostly white. <laughs> My own teeth are more like former Soviet republics. They, <laughs> They're currently independent of one another and very run down. <laughs> Quite often with bloodshed on the borders. It's, uh, that, that's a weight off my mind. It's extremely gratifying for a comedian when an audience appreciates a joke that draws a link between ethnic strife and gum disease. You just fucking, you know you're among friends when that happens. Yeah, and I, I, I uh, I'm jealous of your symmetrical, symmetrical faces as well too. And your faces are the same, like the left hand side of your face is the same as the right hand side. And your ears are the same height, your nose is straight down the middle. It's what we call in Ireland having a Protestant look about you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not symmetrical myself. My ears are a different height, which means that I could never wear glasses because when I'd put them on, they'd be so crooked in my nose, I'd look like I'd just been seduced in a broom cupboard by a cleaning lady, you know, that kind of look. And my nose isn't straight down the middle either, it's slightly off to one side. It means that in summer I get really bad sunburn on this side of my nose. But there could still be traces of unmelted snow on the shadowed side. And for some reason, for some reason my body isn't symmetrical either. Like the muscles on this arm are far more developed than the muscles on this arm. For reasons we won't really go into here. Play tennis, you filthy fuckers. Anyway. I realise I probably talk too quickly for people here. We talk very quickly in Ireland. We talk the same way that old people text uh, without any punctuation whatsoever. And, uh, and I think Irish people have often a sense of dislocation when they arrive here. They feel that America is unfriendly and primarily it's because we mumble. And the people who supply when we're ordering a sandwich, we're always mumbling. Whereas Americans order a sandwich like they speak in general. I will order a sandwich. I am gonna get a sandwich. I am gonna tell you about every step of the way in the ordering this sandwich. I'm gonna bring you on this journey because I need you to know that I need you with me right now in the ordering of this sandwich. I think I've got a pickle. Maybe I'll get it on rye. I don't know, but you're gonna know every step of the way. Manifest destiny is in this sandwich. You know, I leave spaces between my words because those are important as well. Like I don't have hedges between my neighbors. You know, that's that's how you guys work. And whereas we order, we get scared shitless when we go in to order a sandwich because somebody will say, "Can I take your order, sir?" Oh, fuck it, I'll go home. You know, that's the way. 
that's your attitude. Uh, I thought we might have a bit of light-hearted Celtic mystical banter first. Uh, you notice as well too that you're so open in talking about yourselves that it's very easy. It's very easy because we're very closed in. We don't necessarily always talk. We don't always talk about our feelings necessarily. We're quite closed in as a people. The Irish or as the Americans. Years of going to therapy have made you okay about expressing yourselves. And what I found a side effect of this is that it's really easy to eavesdrop on a telephone conversation when you're going down the road. I was in Brooklyn this time last year. That's where the beard happened. I didn't grow it. It just happened in Brooklyn. Uh, I, I, don't really, I don't really feel I deserve a beard. Uh, like I feel like I talk too much to have a proper beard. You know, this is a beard of a man who says, yeah, so last autumn, last fall, a bear ate my mom. And then he doesn't say anything for a year. And that's the kind of... Whereas this is more the beard of somebody who says, yeah, I, I like some of their early stuff, but I have it on vinyl. I'm not so sure about what the direction they're going in right now. Um, I grew up on the American accent. The American accent has become really annoying right now. Um, I grew up with like Tom Waits. Tom Waits saying things yeah. like, yeah, Frank hung his wild years on a nail. He drove through the middle of his wife's forehead. And that's fucking an American accent. Yeah. That's, that's, like, whereas the accent now, like, you couldn't have Tom Waits' song, Frank's Wild Years, in the current American accent, because it would be somebody saying, so, I know this guy, Frank, and, well, wait till I tell you. Um, <sighs> what is up with that guy with the nail and the wife's forehead? Oh, my God, I really don't know what he was doing with that, you know? It was totally unexpected and it really ruined the rest of the dinner party for all of us. Uh, so I was in Brooklyn and with my beard, and with my beard, and there was a girl walking down the street ahead of me and she was on the phone and I could understand every single thing she was saying just from one side of the conversation. She was so open about talking about herself and I really wish I could be like that because she was talking and I understood everything. She was saying, yeah, so I broke up with Tim and, well, a number of reasons. Um, well, he was passive aggressive and he had, um, he had real difficulty talking about himself and his feelings. Uh, I think he was Irish, I don't know. And, uh, you know, I spoke to my therapist and my therapist spoke to her therapist and they both advised me that this would be a really cathartic moment for me. So I think maybe I was projecting maybe with issues, my dad's addiction to prescription pills and the fact that my mom wasn't really around when I was young. So let me just, I want to thank you for helping us through this moment. So let me buy you dinner tonight. I'll meet the corner 4th and 48th. Okay, bye. You learned everything. You learned nothing walking down an Irish street. Try it. Somebody will be on the phone. You learn absolutely nothing. There'll be just somebody saying, huh? Uh -huh. Oh, fuck it, yeah, 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 yeah. This is it, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You said it, you did your bollocks, you did, you did, yeah. For non-Irish, a bollocks in Ireland is a type of fruit. Go and order one in a shop. Trust me, trust me. And, and then at the end, in, in a typical eavesdropped Irish conversation, there will be thrown in one tiny little bit of detail that lets you know that what you missed out on was a really, really juicy bit of gossip and it's incredibly infuriating. Somebody will just sign up, somebody will just sign off the phone and they will just say, look, I'll let you go, but we were very lucky with the judge we got in court today. Ah, shit, <laughs> did I miss, so annoying. One of our stereotypes, which we, uh, I don't know, is it a stereotype, like our stereotype about the Irish drinking? I don't know, is it a stereotype? if we consistently reinforce it every fucking chance we get. Is that a stereotype or is it just the verb to be? Uh, it's, it's infuriating. Every time, every time there's a visitor, like when Obama, came, President Obama came to Ireland, uh, he's Irish-American, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, <laughs> our attitude towards him has changed in recent years. About three years ago, he came to Ireland and he gave a speech in the pub that he was, that was in the village that he was from. And he said, it is a great honor for me to drink a pint in the village that my great, great grandfather left all those years ago. And he said, isn't he brilliant? Look at him handing over a 50 for a uh, load of pints. And he didn't even look for change, you know? And he was big on change at the time. Like, you know, not so much now, but uh, thanks Obama. Anyway. Uh, and then, 
And about t three months ago, he said, it is a disgrace that American companies are using tax havens such as Ireland. And we all said, never liked the prick, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> two eyes too close together. Anyway, but we, we put a pint in front of him. Every time there's a dignitary arrives in the country, we, we embrace them with a pint. And that's fine, you know. I think, I think sometimes we like the language of drink. We like to express ourselves. We have 450 words to describe being drunk. It's pretty much any noun with the letters ED after it. I was fucked, I was trousered, I was absolutely hosed. I was flutered, I was tabled, I was lighting rigged last night. I was penisted, I was penisted last night. Although my favorite one doesn't actually end in ED. It's the one, if you ever use it, people will just think you're a complete native. Just say, I was belubas last night. And a lot of Irish people use that word, don't know where it came from, right? Uh, Baluba were a Central African tribe that during the 1960s massacred a lot of Irish soldiers. Luckily we saw the lighter side of that and thought that that <laughs> perfectly described how fucked we were at Wayne's Sweet 16 birthday party. We're always using geopolitical situations to describe our drunkenness. Uh, I was blitzed last night. I was so drunk at Brian's leaving drinks that it was the equivalent of being bombed from the air for four years by the Luftwaffe. That's what it was like. No, that happened. It's not in just in the books. Anyway, um, wow, that's weird. Anyway, uh, I do find that one problem is that we, uh, our reputation precedes us. So when we go abroad, that's all people know about us. So this happened to me. I was working in Belgium. Uh, Belgium is one of those countries you fly over when you're doing your tour of Europe. Uh, it's, like, it's like Kansas, right? And uh, I, was, I was starting work on a Monday and the, my Belgian colleague said to me, Ah, Colm, is it your first time in Brussels? I suppose you are Irish, you will be going out tonight having a few pints. And I was so annoyed, how dare they have this reductive view of my proud country, which two and a half thousand years before Christ built the, built the passage graves before the pyramids. We saved Europe's learning during the dark ages. And all they could think of was that the only thing I would know what to do is go out drinking that night. As it turned out, I was going out that night, but for, <laughs> for a few acclimatizers. But the problem was that I didn't know enough about Belgium in order to be able to reply with a similar stereotype about them that would be in the way of workplace light-hearted banter. And the thing I did know about them just wasn't really suitable. It was just kind of obscure historical facts. So when they said to me, ah, Cullum, I suppose you will be going out tonight having the pints. I couldn't very well turn around to them and say, ha, I suppose you Belgians, you'll be going out tonight enslaving the Congo and chopping the arms off the rubber tappers. You know, it's not exactly banter is what I'm saying. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be Cullum O'Regan. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. everybody. Colin O'Regan. Woo! Are you having fun? Yeah. Are you guys ready for your headliner? I'm very excited to bring him up. This guy is just fantastic. Needs no introduction. Let's hear it for Joe Rooney, everybody. Joe Rooney! Jump around. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Give it up for the band! Absolutely brilliant, brilliant stuff. So it's great to be here uh, in uh, New York, uh, and uh, it's just great to be here because I have two young children back in Ireland. Uh, it's just great to get away from them. So thanks for organising this. <laughs> Fucking brilliant to get away from them. Is there anyone here with young kids? Has young kids? Not with them, uh, but uh, at home. Nope. Yeah. Few people. Yeah. It's fucking great to get out, isn't it? It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. I have two children, and uh, when we found out we were having our first child, we decided we wouldn't find out if it was going to be a boy or a girl. And it's five now, we're dying to have a look. <laughs> yeah. That's actually not true. Uh, I, <laughs> I know perfectly well uh, that my eldest is a boy, and uh, he's 16, and that's just a really old joke. 11 years old. <laughs> Or, no, or, yeah. And uh, recently, he, my son was on the laptop. He was doing something on the laptop. And when he walked away from it, his mother checked the history on Google. Do you know what happens there? She found phrases like fat Korean asses, <laughs> naked grandmothers on trampolines, <laughs> and wombat poop. Yeah, 
And uh, she said to me, you better have a word with him. You better have a word with him, she said. And I said, I will have a word with him. That's what I said. But in my head, I was thinking, brilliant, I'm off the hook. Because that was me looking them up. <laughs> so I'm uh, divorced now. And... Uh, it's fine, I'm in a new relationship uh, and uh, there's a big age gap, actually, I have to say. 24 years of an age gap. I think it's great. She makes me feel young. Yeah. She's 75. <laughs> and I just feel young because I can walk around and she can't get out of a chair. So it's just great, you know. And uh, I, sometimes I put her on the trampoline and <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> By the way, wombat poop is cubed, just in case you're wondering why I was looking that up. You can look it up now on your iPhone, yeah. So, no, but it is great to get away from the kids, because uh, when I was growing up, you know, uh, it's, it was like that when I was growing up. And nowadays, people want to have the kids with them. They're afraid to leave them anywhere. They, they're, they're just over. And when you have kids, you start reading books about how to bring up kids, going on the internet. But when I was growing up, parents didn't give a shit where you were. Like, you were actually told to get out of the house at 9 o'clock and not come back till 6 in the evening. Just get out of my sight, you know, that's it. Uh, you could be anywhere, down the end of a field, playing with a badger or a fox or something like that. <laughs> and um, the only thing that parents worried about, or mothers worried about, uh, this happened in Ireland, this happened in America, where mothers were scared of plastic bags being near their children. Did that happen here? Did you have that here? Yeah, yeah, because your mother would come in and she'd see the kids playing there, if she saw there was a plastic bag lying on the floor beside the kids, she'd have a, she'd be like, oh my God, a plastic bag! Oh Jesus, they could have all smothered! Oh Jesus, be heart! Put that bag away! Now go on out and play in the road. Go on, go on. <laughs> or go up to Dirty Willie's house and play outside there. Dirty Willie would be like a character in the village, right? Every village in Ireland had a, a, a character. Uh, he'd be a fellow who walked around the, the town uh, talking to himself with his Willie hanging out. Yeah. Uh, nowadays they're called paedophiles, but back then they were like a, a local character. <laughs> and people would say, oh, uh, Willie, he's fantastic. He loves the children. He's brilliant. He trains the under-12 football team, the swimming team, the Irish dance troupe, and he does it all in his house after 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's all different now. So we're all having a bit of fun. Are you having a good St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. Hey! You! It's just an excuse for uh, getting drunk, really, for you people, isn't it? I don't need that excuse. I'm Irish. I I'll get drunk any day, you know. I, that's why I, I get, I like drinking and Irish people do like drinking. That is, is, is a cliche, but it's true. Yeah. And that's why I get annoyed when I go on holidays and I see, uh, you know, like, do you have these a booze crews? Do you have that here? It's like a, a, sh a boat where you can get drunk. <laughs> but I just get annoyed. You know, they advertise it on holidays. Like, oh, that's a booze cruise. Come on the cruise and get drunk. There's a bar on the boat. I say, fuck that. That's, a, that's just a ferry to me, you know. <laughs> I'll get drunk on any boat, a dinghy or a yacht or whatever, it doesn't matter. You don't have to put a bar in for me, I'll bring me your own beer, thanks, yeah. Yeah, the best place to get drunk is on a long uh, haul flight in an aeroplane, because uh, you're locked in there, and it doesn't matter what you do, no one can get out. You can start fighting with people and everything, you can't get thrown off. <laughs> But, but you have an excuse as well. They call it air rage. If you get, to, it's not really air rage. You just happen to get drunk and start a fight on a plane. You know, you don't get that excuse anywhere else. If you get drunk and start fighting in a Mexican restaurant, no one's going to say, "Oh, he is suffering from burrito fury or taco anger or something." You know. I actually get angry before the plane takes off, actually. It's when, when I'm queuing to get to my seat and it's, nothing's moving because some feckin' idiot has, has sitting at the front of the plane, got on the back door, and he's making his way back against the flow of traffic, like a salmon trying to get home to his birthplace. Yeah. I hate those feckers. When they, when they get to the top of the plane, I just kick them all the way back down the aisle and write IRA on their back. Whoa. Let them deal with it, yeah. The other time I get angry, it's in the, it going through airport security. I, I like to travel back and over to Ireland and England a lot, and I just bring hand luggage and the amount of creams and liquids that have been taken off me 
What are you meant to do when you go for a weekend away? Are you not meant to brush your teeth or wash your hair or something? You know, like, I, I, it's so bad now, I'm taking tubes of toothpaste up my arse just to get through. <laughs> I'm lovely breath now, and, I have a, I, and, and the people at the front will probably get a whiff of my lovely minty bomb as well, yeah. <laughs> but I got, so, I, I got so angry one time. I was doing a, a show in an Irish pub in Aberdeen in Scotland, and I was flying uh, from Aberdeen to Dublin. It's a, t it's a short flight. It's, a, it's like flying from... Uh, New York to uh, the airport in New York. You know, it's, just, it's, it's a tiny little plane. You don't get a designated seat. You just get on the plane, and if there's a very fat person on one side of the plane, everyone else sits on the other side. That's it. You can sit beside the pilot and everything if you pay extra. And I got so angry about this, I wrote a protest song. Yeah! Yeah. Because <laughs> we love writing protest songs. So... It's a pity, uh, so I'm going to play it for you now. I was going to ask the band to back me up, but they're gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> does that ever happen, Bono? He's just about to uh, do a song. Oh, fuck, the edge is gone. Shit. <laughs> it's gone for a cup of tea, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a protest song about uh, airport security. I believe. Yeah that all the friends and relatives of those who work in airport security get a lot of free skin and hair products. <laughs> oh yeah, uh -huh, oh yeah. And shampoo and toothpaste and moisturizer <laughs> and tiny little scissors. <laughs> Nail files And I believe That any terrorist Who wants to blow up a plane From Aberdeen to Dublin Using a bomb Made out of over 100 milliliters of stuff That looks like hair wax Is a fucking genius <laughs> Here's a fuck on dream house. A fucking working genius. He's a better man than me. I'm sorry if I'm spitting all over you. Sorry, man. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, and I believe that if he's that clever, then he must be clever enough to know that all he's got to do is get 200 milliliter bottles of the same stuff and add them together when he gets on the plane, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Thank you. For fuck's sake! Woo! For fuck's sake! For fuck's sake! Bring it down. Thank you. That was fucking brilliant. This song has never been so good. We, we should, we've got to get to the studio straight after this <laughs> recording. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Mr. Airport Security Man, I only bought this hair wax today. I only used it once. Yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> yeah. Mr. Airport Security Man, I only bought this pen off as a souvenir. And I forgot I had it in my hand. Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah! Give it to me. Fuck yeah! Fuck you! Yeah. Oh yeah! A fuck yeah! Oh, come on! That was amazing. <laughs> I've never enjoyed a whole audience shouting fuck you at me so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway, so that was, that was, a, yeah, I'm, mm. uh -huh. So, anyway, excuse me? You thought I was Bono? 
I'm a bit thinner than Bono. <laughs> Just saying. Bono, I doesn't mean Bono's, uh, but you know, I always think, uh, what's it like if, you're, if your dad is a rock star? You know, if Bono is your dad and he's putting the kids to bed at night, he's probably, he's probably always like Bono. He's probably always like, it's eight o'clock. It's time to go to bed. Yeah. So I'm going out with the edge tonight and I've got a babysitter. It's Nelson Mandela. Obviously, this is before Nelson Mandela died. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, I'm 51 and uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me? I'm a young fella, really. What age you? What age you then? You must be. 69. Oh, a nice sexy. Yeah. Sexy. Yeah. It's a sexy age. Yeah. Yeah. Good man. Let's hear for this. There's a man here, yes? Yeah, good. Good. 69's good. Oh, yeah. But when I was back, I was over here in September and uh, I was doing a gig out in Yonkers. And then this Italian American guy from Yon yeah, Yonkers. Cool. It's here for Yonkers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yonkers. 69. Good. And. Uh, <laughs> Um, but this is a guy I was staying with, he wanted me to go to a, a strip club after the show. Right? And I said, no, I, I, I've never been to a strip club. And he couldn't believe it. And I said, no, I, I don't want to go because I, I think it's nuts. Because what's the, why would I want to go to a place where there's scantily clad ladies walking around, but you can't talk to them and you can't touch them? That's fucking insanity. That's nuts. That's just driving yourself insane. Like imagine if I was just living off bad food, like plain food for months, like just plain pasta and plain white bread and water. And then some friend of mine came up to me and he said, hey Joe, there's a new restaurant open just up the street and there's this great chef and he's, he cooks all sorts of food, Brazilian food and Russian food and Nigerian food and Cajun food and uh, whatever, uh, any food, Irish food or whatever. And, and then you sit there uh, in a chair and he comes out with the food and he kind of just dances around with it and he shows you it. <laughs> You, you might have a smell of it, that's it, and uh, <laughs> the beer is really expensive in this restaurant, by the way. And if you want to pay extra, you can go into a little room uh, with a dinner on your own and just look at it. And it's like... <laughs> and then at the end of the night, you go home to your dark apartment and eat your white bread and dream of all the food that you saw that night. I would say, fuck off, I'm not going, you're no friend of mine. But I went anyway, I tried. <laughs> it wasn't that good, it wasn't actually. Yeah. There was a thing, it was in a place where it was all like hip hop music playing, and you could get, if you had a $100 bill, you could change it into 100 singles, and then throw the notes at the girls. <laughs> Which means like you, you could pretend you were like a big gangster, but there were just $1 bills. Uh, it wouldn't work in Ireland because uh, we don't have a, 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 a paper one euro, it's a coin. <laughs> the girls would be fucked. Be like... <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, I'm skint as well. And uh, you know, I've, t I've too many things. I have two children, I have two dogs, I have two cats and I have a rabbit. And I spend a fucking fortune on those, on those pets particularly. I spend a fortune on pets, the, the vet fees and food. And, and the other day, I passed a homeless person and I didn't give them any money and I felt guilty. Maybe it's the Catholic in me, but I went, I, I just spent a load of money on a dog and I didn't give a person any money. And that is why a lot of homeless people now have an animal with them. Because animals are better at begging than people. They get more money, they do. There's one fella in Dublin that has a rabbit with him. And loads of people stop and they go, oh, look at the little rabbit, look at the rabbit. And I'm going, what about the person behind the rabbit? <laughs> Fuck that rabbit. That rabbit doesn't even know it's homeless. <laughs> it's not like the rabbit was begging separately on its own and the guy was begging up the street and the rabbit went, hey, we should join up together. What the fuck? It's not a double act, you know, I, like, we treat animals better than people. We do treat animals better than people. I'll give you an example. My cat did a big shit in the living room recently. And I was pissed off and I was cleaning it up and it stank and I was cleaning it up and I was going, fuck that cat, you know, and I was like, clean it up. But after about 15 minutes, I was sitting on the couch watching TV and the cat came up to me and started purring and I forgot all about it and I was rubbing the cat. I forgot all about it. But if my father had done a shit in the living room, 
he would be in a home now. That'd be it. Yeah. So, uh, I, uh, yeah, I am scared. I'm kind of skinned. To, like, do you know what happened in Ireland that we had a load of money for about five years? Everyone, there was the Celtic Tiger economy. Everybody had loads of money. We all had a helicopter each and uh, we were just eating chocolate and sitting in helicopters. That was it. <laughs> but it all, it all went tits up, you know, it all, it all just, uh, the arse fell out of it. And uh, literally. Uh, and. Uh, and now we're skint. And when I had the money, I was shopping in, you know, the, the, the Whole Foods type shop in Ireland, right? You know, and now I'm in, what's, what's a cheap supermarket here? What's a bad, look at... Key, you've got loads of them, wow! <laughs> Key food, is it? Wine fair, someone says. Well, whatever, who gives a fuck? Anyway, yeah. Well, that's where I'm chopping now, okay, in, the, in Ireland, okay. And I'm, I miss the Whole Foods type f stuff, you know, because I know that chicken, the a chicken you get in a Whole Foods shop is much better because you can read about it. Like, if you get a chicken in a normal supermarket, it just says chicken on it, and that's it, and a date. But in Whole Foods, you'll, it'll tell you how it grew up, and you'll be looking and going, oh, it's a corn-fed chicken. Uh, it lived in a semi-detached house. It wore Uggs all its life. And then one day we slowly sneaked up on it and gently strangled it with organic hands. Even on the raspberries it says, hand-picked raspberries, picked by hand. So feckin' what? What other part of the body can you pick raspberries with? Except the hands. They're trying to say in other supermarkets, they have people with no hands picking the raspberries, picking them with their wrists or something. Like picking them with their arse, going, fucking hell. I can't believe I got this job. I just landed in America and I'm an arse picker. <laughs> I'm a skilled arse worker. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's what I'm at now, just trying to just trying to get by. I've cut back on loads of the pleasures in life, like not the pleasures, just the, the outlay of money. Like I used to sign up for the gym for a year in advance. Has anyone ever done that? Woo! Fancy, I know. It's a waste of time. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done it? Like you, you've done that. Because what happens is I did it one year and I signed up for a year in advance, and by July of that year, I hadn't been to the gym for two months. I was actually losing weight, worrying about the money I'd lost by not going. Quite a good regime, actually. It's a waste of time in a country like, what, in a country like Ireland where there's fields you can run in and everything. You know, like, what do you do? You, you sign up for the gym, you leave your house, you get in your car, you drive five miles to somewhere else to run on the spot. That's insanity, that is. You could save yourself a fortune by jogging all the way to the gym and going, fuck off, gym, and jogging home again. I drove to the gym one day and I, I, found, I found myself driving around the car park looking for a parking space nearer to the door of the gym. <laughs> Didn't want to walk too far to the place I was going for a run in. <sighs> so is there any, any uh, people not American here that, that you're, where are you from? You're Irish, where are you from? Cavan, <laughs> very specific. Yeah, I was expecting just a country, but anyway, yeah, an actual. And any people that aren't Irish and are Sweden. not from yeah. Sweden. Yeah. Very good. Actually, that's funny. I was, I was. What part of Sweden? Stockholm. Brilliant, because that's the only place I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was doing a gig. Speaking of like going to the gym and like Irish people, Irish men when they go to the gym, they don't wear the proper. Gear. We don't like dress up in the proper gear. We just wear stupid old dirty shorts and uh, maybe uh, black socks, knee length or something, you know. <laughs> and a t-shirt with I love uh, Bermuda or something. Or, I, love, I love Guinness on it. And I know, like we would go, so I'd go jogging in the wrong gear. And I was in Sweden, I was in Stockholm. And I went for a jog during the day and I was wearing the soccer gear. I was wearing soccer gear. People were staring at me like I was insane. They're like, oh, what is wrong with you? And this is your accent, isn't it? Perfect, yeah. And uh, 
he must have been playing football or soccer and the ball went out of play and he went to get it and then he couldn't find his way back to the match. That's True. right, right. That's yeah. exactly right, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Exactly right. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, anyway. Because <laughs> uh, I've got two pairs of shorts I use for everything. I, I have a pair of swimming shorts that I play soccer in. So. <laughs> They, no, they're safe, there's netting in them, they're fine. And a pair of Gaelic football shorts. Do, do, do you know about Gaelic football? Do you, I'll tell you about Gaelic football. It's like American football, but without the helmets or the shoulder pads, and you can bring firearms onto the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but the shorts are tiny, and I, the, the ones I have are from, I still have them from when I was in the under 12 team. And, uh, <laughs> They're from the 70s when all shorts were up to here and they had slits on the side and you could see your underwear and there's no netting that you don't know what's going to happen it's like doing circus tricks without a net it's just i was in the gym one day with them i was doing some stretches and uh, i looked in the mirror there was a testicle hanging out i covered it up well i went "Ooh, another muscle wow they're popping out everywhere it's a wrinkly, hairy muscle, but I'll take it. <laughs> but uh, so these shorts from the 70s, I don't know how, what happened in the 70s when, when they were playing Gaelic football. It must have been dangerous. With those little shorts, no netting. I'd say if you were two people were marking each other and one guy went up for the ball, if you didn't jump up as well with him, you'd get a slap of a penis in the face. A big, a big Irish penis with potatoes hanging off it and it. A, a, stone wall down the middle of it and a castle to the side, yeah. It'd be terrible. So, uh, so anyway, the, the reason, one of the reasons I might be here is because, uh, well, of emigration, right? We, we, I'll, t I'll give you an example. I, look, there's so much emigration from Ireland. It's part of everything, right? And even when, in Gaelic football, there's the one big match every year, like the Super Bowl of Gaelic football. And when the commentator is commentating on the match, everybody, he knows that there are people watching in New York and there's people watching in Australia as well. So when whatever player has the ball, he tell you about his cousins in Australia or uh, a priest in Nigeria or something like that. And so you're listening to the match, it's like, there's Parik Flynn on the ball! His uncle is working on a building site over in the Bronx! <laughs> And this fella in the Bronx probably hasn't got a green card, doesn't want anyone to know he's over there. <laughs> so the Amer in America, like, so a lot of people came here hundreds of years ago, right? Into the famine or something like that. And they were just starving and they were actually meant to come here and get food and bring it back. But they stayed, you know, fuckers. Anyway, uh, and then there's a lot of people went to England and you'd see them in, they went in the 60s and 70s, unskilled workers, and you'd see them in a pub singing about going back to Ireland. And they'd be singing, If I had the wings of a sparrow, I'd fly back to the town of Athlone. The wings of a sparrow. This fellow's about 300 pounds. Like the, wing, the wings of a swan wouldn't get him off the ground, you know. But you have, so you have all these, I'm gonna do a little bit more music now, okay? So there's different kinds of Irish music. That's, that's emigration music. I just, I just uh, sang there. Then you, then you have rebel songs. That's just about fighting the English, basically. So rebel songs would be like, Oh, the crack we had the day we died for Ireland. It was brilliant crack time for Ireland. It was brilliant. It's shit now, you can't die for Ireland. You have to die of natural causes. It's shit. And then you had the Dubliners. Do you, do you know who the Dubliners are? They're just, they're five fellas with big beards. One big beard. They're t it's, and uh, they still, they sing dirty, filthy songs, really. It's just, uh, here's a song about a dirty old whore. She'd shag you for a lump of coal. And, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about the old days in Dublin. If you didn't pay your gas bill, the rimmer man had come round. He'd rim the whole family. <laughs> this is true. You should come to Ireland from Sweden. You get rimmed. It's brilliant. Anyway, um, we'd love to rim Swedish. <laughs> nice clean bottoms. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but um, 
the songs would start off lovely as well and then just get violent for no reason at all. <laughs> so it would start off about a lovely little animal. So give, give me an animal I could sing about. Banda. Muskrat! <laughs> <laughs> no, a, a muskrat, a muskrat, a muskrat. Yeah, okay, grand. Because I would never get a muskrat in Ireland, so... Because uh, they're extinct in Ireland. <laughs> And uh, so I'll sing it, start off about a muskrat and then just get violent for no reason. Ah, oh, there was an old man and he lived with a muskrat in a cottage down by the river. Then he kicked it up the hole and chopped its balls off and made sandals out of its liver. Dirty fucking muskrats, they're all a bunch of bricks. Anyway, yeah, sorry, sorry, lads. <laughs> just as he came in there. So. <laughs> so that's our, and then there'd be loads of exaggeration about drinking and fighting so that's be then he went to the pub and drank 15 pints in the time it takes to boil a kettle and he fought 500 grenadiers the only weapon he had was a nettle come here sting the whole lot of his back to England and the English should be going, fuck off, we got dock leads, sting away. That's a, that's a bit of an Irish joke, anyway, fuck, doesn't matter. And then you get to the chorus of an Irish song, you can rhyme with any word by using what I call the diddly idle method of rhyming. So g give me a word that's hard to rhyme with. Silver! I, I can't put orange into an Irish traditional song, the peace process hasn't gone that far, sorry. Silver! Silver! Oh, okay. I'll rhyme with silver using the diddly idle method. He was a brave man and he owned a bit of silver. He was a brave man, diddly idly dilver. Thank you. <laughs> uh, there's another thing. Oh, it's Swedish, love that bit. Yeah. <laughs> Impressed. But there's another reason Diddly Idol was used. It was when the 70s were a very Catholic country and you couldn't sing about sex. So there was a mention of sex in the song, you'd use Diddly Idol to cover it up. So it was a bit like... <laughs> oh, she rubbed his Diddly Idol, Diddle Diddle Doo. He twiddled her Diddly Idol there. Oh. He stuck a Diddly Idol, Diddle Dildo up for Diddly Idol Dum. And he went fiddly widdly diddly diddly diddly. Fiddly widdly diddly 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 Fiddly widdly diddly 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 And then she come Yeah, yeah, thank you. Normally that'd take about 15 minutes, but I just sped it up for you. I've got to put some work in. But anyway, now I'd like to bring, I'd like to see a bit more, you know, modern music done in an Irish way. Let's see Green Day done in, in the style of Irish music or an Irish singer, so Green Day be like Don't want to be an American Aegis Anyway, yeah uh, Nirvana done as an Irish song Oh, something wrong with my guitar, isn't it? Could be the battery When the light's out It's less dangerous Here we are now Entertain us Hello, 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 how are ya, hello, how are ya, hello, how are ya, come on in, there's a load of us, we're all in the kitchen. I don't know whether, this is cool though. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's cool. Uh, so, uh, so we've, that's our Irish minister. So we, we've had, a, you know, poverty and, and, and war and everything and famine in our country and our, our music is all just happy, diddly idle do we don't give a shite, you know. And, and you, in, in America, you've got money and freedom and democracy and your folk music is just moaning, to be honest, I have to say. It, it's the blues and country music, okay? It's just moaning. It's just all that country music. Fifteen of us grew up in a little shack in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Five of us were eaten by a bobcat. And hurricane blew five of us away. Mama sat on three of us. It was just me and my sister left, so we started another family. Yo, give me six. Anyway.
before I finish, uh, uh, okay, I won't finish, ever. <laughs> I'll never finish. I'll just stay here for the rest of my life. Okay. 15 more minutes. Okay, good. Um, w w things have changed. Uh, I, I have to say, I'm, uh, you're going to be disappointed in this, but in Ireland we've stopped eating potatoes now. We're just eating pasta and paninis and drinking cafe mocha. That's it. If, the, if there was a potato blight now, we wouldn't give a shit. We wouldn't care. If there was a basil blight, we'd be fucked, to be honest. We're like, oh, no pesto, we'll have to emigrate. <laughs> the country is mo there's roads everywhere now, unbelievable. And uh, <laughs> there's hotels, like Hilton Hotels and Radisson Hotels, and I just think we should get rid of them all and go back to Irish-run family hotels. They're m mad hotels, they're in the middle of nowhere. They're not purpose-built, they're a converted mental home or a prison or something. <laughs> And they, and they don't care, they don't even like you staying there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're checking in, they're like, breakfast is between 3.30 and 3.35 a.m. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> and they give you metal keys for your door. You know, remember those? Remember when you get metal keys for your door in a hotel? No? You don't remember that? Well, you used to. They were just, key they were called keys. And, uh... <laughs> And if it was a hotel, they were attached to a plank of wood as well. <laughs> Remember, they were afraid you'd rob their key. <laughs> Why would you do rob your key? You start my own hotel. I'm going to start my own hotel. I know the biggest outlay will be on the keys, so I'll rob them. Yeah. Uh, but, but at least the metal keys, you're sure they're going to open the door no matter what happens. The plastic key, it's hit and miss, isn't it? Have you ever... Has that ever happened to you where you've, you put them in the back pocket, you're in the bar, you're getting pissed, you're, it's 3 a.m., you just want to go to bed, you're sweating pure alcohol, you're, you go 12 floors up, you get to your door, you just want to go to bed, you take your key out and you stick it in the slot and the fucking red light comes on! Fuck the red light! Fuck you! You don't want to go all the way, you have to go all the way back down to reception to get it done and you probably don't want to go there because you probably uh, abused the receptionist as you got in the lift. <laughs> or you think you're great with your big desk, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I love your desk, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm drunk. <laughs> sort that for me, please. <sighs> The new hotels, they don't sort out the lighting system. I, I hate that when you go into your room and you turn the lights on and you forget about them and you're just doing, you're on your own in the hotel room and you're you know, putting shampoos in your bag or uh, <laughs> the face cloth, the pillow that's in the wardrobe. They won't notice that gone. The Bible, something to read on the plane. And... Uh, and then you're happy and you're lying in bed and you think, I'll go to sleep now, and the light switch is beside the bed, so that's great. And you turn that switch, and two more lights you haven't seen before, come on! <laughs> the stupid lights, one under a shelf and a desk lamp, and you're, you're up to 3.30 trying to get the lights off in your room, and the fan comes on, the, the radio comes on, a head comes out of the wall and goes, is everything okay, sir? <laughs> and now... They're, have you noticed the hotels are cutting back on towels now? They don't give you as many towels as they used to. Have you noticed that? Yeah. They used to give you loads of towels. It used to be, oh, there's loads in your room, there's ones in the, there's towels in the gym, there's towels in the pool. Just dry yourself all weekend. Just enjoy yourself. Just rub yourself raw with our towels. Don't leave here with any dead skin. That's our motto here. Just leave it on the tiles, we'll vacuum it out and send it to China and they make uh, designer clothes with them, yeah. <laughs> but now they're stingy with the towels and they blame the environment, you see. Have you noticed that? That's the way out. They, you pay a fortune for a weekend away in a spa hotel. You get in, it's lovely in the foyer. You get into your room, it's a lovely room. You get into the bathroom, there's a sign on the wall in the bathroom that says, if you want your towels washed, leave them on the floor. And you don't have to use all your towels, and that way you're saving the environment. 
The environment, my arse. That's not why. It's their fucking washing bill they're thinking about. They're fucking bastards. When I see that sign, I get all the towels and I rub them off me willy and me arse. Like that. Fuck that. Fuck that. And then I fold them and put them back. It's a silent protest. The last time I was away for a weekend in a hotel, I didn't give a shit about the environment, I'll tell you that. I got into my room, I put all the lights on, I, I put on, I went for a wee in the toilet and I pressed a big flush for my wee, for my pee pee, yeah. I, I, I got two keys, I put one in the slot so when I went out, the bed could watch TV, yeah. I was getting my money's worth. I left the shower running for the whole weekend, just on full heat. I didn't care about the environment, I didn't give a shit about the rainforest, I had my own rainforest in the room. I was growing mushrooms under the bed. The girl came in to change the towels, she got lost in the mist, she couldn't find her way out. I was following her around naked, just going, I'm a lost tribe! <laughs> It's gone, it's gone like this as well, where you go into a restaurant and the, you, the menu, you don't even understand what, what they're saying. They're not saying chicken and french fries, they're saying some mad shit. You're reading the menu, it's like, four baby carrots on a boat made of noodles, sailing across a lake of parsley sauce, to a symphony of broccoli. The fuck? And the worst thing about it is, when you order wine and they pour a bit and you have to taste it, there's no point in asking Irish people to taste the wine, because we're going to say yes. <laughs> it's alcohol, for fuck's sake. We're not going to be going like French people are going, oh, what is this? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, you insult me. Uh, I piss on your mother's cabbage. <laughs> Irish, Irish people are like, yes, I'm getting uh, gas here, uh, gas fumes. Uh, I think it's an Alaskan grape. Yeah, I'll take it, yeah. Irish people, Irish people don't complain about anything. If the food is rubbish in a restaurant, we don't complain. The waiter comes along and goes, is everything okay? We go, yeah, yeah, it's great, yeah. Then he goes, and we go, this is shit, isn't this fucking shit? It's, it's not even what I ordered. Irish people have the best excuse for not complaining. It's like, I wouldn't give them the satisfaction of complaining. <laughs> I'll eat it and get sick at home. That'll show them. <laughs> but there's three times, before I finish, there's three times you're forced to say yes if you're Irish and about my generation. And the first time is when you taste the wine, you always say yes. Second time is when you get your hair cut and they come around with a mirror and show you the back of your head. <laughs> Has anyone ever went, what the fuck have you done on the back of my hair? I'm glad you showed me that. That's a disgrace. Go back and have another go. Go back around. Back around the back of my head and have another go at that. Yeah. And the third time you're forced to say yes is when you're in a relationship, uh, married or whatever, for about 20 years and you still have a sex life, but you're getting distracted in the middle of sex. You're thinking of other things. You're having sex and going, oh, I have to renew the tax on my car. Or to do my, I have to clean the gutters. I must remember that. That's not how I have sex, by the way. <laughs> but, um, when that happens, as a man, you want to spice things up. You want to try something different to spice things up, like role play, right? Has anyone, do you do that? Do you two be out there? Role play, you dress up as something, somebody else when you're having sex. Do, have you ever done that? No. You two must have. You have that look about you. <laughs> yeah, what, what did you dress up as? Oh no, the girlfriend's totally embarrassed now. What would you dress up as? Well, let's say it didn't happen, but if it did happen, <laughs> what would you dress up as? Come on. Come on, you, you've already said you've done it. So anyway. Is it a, a uniform or... Is it an animal? A bear? Bus driver? Did you say who said that? <laughs> That'd be shit. God. At least I'd an aeroplane pilot or something. No, bus driver. 
Right. Are you, are you not going to tell me? Fucking hell. I mean, you, normally it's a, it, it is a, a pilot or something, isn't it? The man dresses as a pilot, his wife dresses as a, a hijacker or something, and uh, they play out a fantasy, isn't it? She goes, take this plane to dirty town. He says, yeah, will there be turbulence? She says, I have my hand on your control tower. Can I eject fuel in mid-flight? <laughs> Can I drop my bags in your overhead locker? <laughs> but you've been doing that, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Normally you wouldn't say that to your wife in case she'd laugh at you or, or, or get, think you're a pervert, like she thinks he is. And uh, <laughs> uh, so you'd leave it up to her. Now, now there's 50 shades of gray now, so maybe if you ask your wife to suggest something in the bedroom, she'd probably have a dungeon already built. <laughs> She was just waiting for you to ask. Well, I don't know. But before that book and before that film, she probably would have re read an article in Cosmopolitan and it would be like, how to spice up your love life for middle-aged couples. And it'd be written by an ex-nun or something. It'd be shit. It'd be shit. It'd be all like, mood lighting, scented candles, herbal remedies. Maybe rub an Earl Grey tea bag off his arse. Burn some sage on his, on his penis to get rid of evil spirits. Yeah, anyway. Um, no, but y'all, it'd be rubbish. There'd be no nipple clamps or whips, anyway, you know. Uh, I'd be try nibbling his earlobe. That's a waste of time, nibbling. <laughs> do, you, do you nibble his earlobe? Do you? It's a waste of time. You, uh, you take that time back now and you do something productive with it, you know. Because men are not like you girls. You have erogenous zones all over the place, not just the normal places, you know. You have erogenous zones, you know, the back of my neck or something that's, oh, the, you know, girls were saying, oh, I love the back of my neck. Oh, my, I'm a knee girl, you know. <laughs> Rub me knees there. I can actually orgasm. You know, I, I, you have er, erogenous zones everywhere. Like, I can see 15 on you from here, you know. Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, but that doesn't work with men. She'd be nibbling some stupid part here, way off the beaten track, you know. <laughs> I don't think where that would be, but anyway, yeah. In New York, where is the way off the beaten track in New York? Anyway, whatever. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, where? Ankles. No, a place in New York. Not fucking, there isn't a place called Ankles in New York. I'm taking the F train to Ankles today. <laughs> the fuck train. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. The, the joy is gone now. I'll, I'll remember it. And I'll, I'll, I'll just want it for the next time. Anyway, okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah. But then she does that. She nibbles some stupid part. And then she looks at you and goes, was that nice? That is the third time you have to say yes. You should say yes. Don't be honest and go, no, no, it was like a mouse biting me. I don't know what you were at. It was a waste of half an hour. I just, I could have been cleaning the gutters, you know. It's true to say, like men and women, that we are, we all know we're different mentally. Men are from Mars, isn't it? And women from Venus, right? But physically, obviously as well. And, and like men, I'd say, it would be fair to, it'd be just like bang, bang, that's it, you know, if it was up to men, you know? That'd be it. Now, women like you're slower. Like when a man's in bed with a woman for the first time and she's kissing his shoulder and rubbing his head or whatever, he's just lying there thinking to himself, just go for the willy. It's sticking out. <laughs> It's the elephant in the room. <laughs> I get, I, you know, I'm in show business. Girls come up to me after the show and they'll be licking me nipples and everything. And, and uh, you'll see them there, I'll just be there. And, uh, and I let them at it, you know, lick away, I say to them. But if I was honest, I'd go, no, they, they're not like your nipples. There's no feeling in them at all. You're wasting your time. You might as well be licking a wart. No, you know. <laughs> But, <laughs> but uh, that was great. The drummer's done in. Licking the mark, yeah. Okay, um, double act. Uh, but um, 
but you know, because if men and women are things you'd find in the house, a woman would be like a DVD player, a very complicated thing. You'd need a, you'd need, remember DVD players? Yeah. And uh, you'd need a manual to program it. It takes ages, you know. A man is simply, be like a toaster. Like you don't, you don't need a manual. There's one knob, press that. Stand back, it'll pop now, look. Just by looking at it, it'll pop, yeah. A woman, it's like going into the cockpit of an aeroplane. There's buttons and switches and dials everywhere. It's like, fuck, they have to be down. They're anti-clockwise, two at the same time, yeah. Keep that going with your foot as well. I don't know what kind of woman this is. She has a vagina way over there. But anyway, <laughs> and give that take a lick out. Uh, 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 too, too too gentle, too hard, too hard, too fast, too soft. Uh, fuck's sake. And it's all going really well. And then in the middle of it, she just says, what was that noise downstairs? What the fuck? What the fuck? I'm trying to do this here. It's probably the cat or whatever. And then she says, oh, stop. The mood is gone now. The mood is gone. That never happens to a man when he's having sex. The house could go on fire. He'd be like, no, no, we'll finish this first. Fuck. Just let it burn away, it's grand, yeah, yeah. I don't even like this house, fuck it. It is burning me arse, but I kinda like it. Come on, let's finish this, come on! Let's do this! So, anyway, yeah. That's, uh, I'm gonna have to finish there. I just brought you to the point of orgasm and I'm gonna leave you uh, to, to help yourself there. Uh, and thank you very much and thank you to the band and thank you to everybody that was on tonight. Thank you!